Hello, welcome to Morning Markets. I'm Amber Canwar. We are watching pressure in the markets right now. The TSX down nearly a full percent with only the energy sector trading up. Today, we got a key read of inflation that came in hotter than expected, both on a headline basis and when it came to the core number. That's proving to be a little bit of a fly in the ointment for those who have been expecting rate cuts, particularly those in the March rate cut camp. So that could be the reason that we're seeing some of the pressure here. In crypto, it was a watershed moment. Yesterday, the SEC finally approving 11 of these ETFs. But cryptocurrencies are starting to fade the game. We were just an hour ago looking at Bitcoin maybe hitting 48,000. Now here we are back below 47. We'll continue to track how that evolves as well as tracking who the winner is going to be on the day amassing assets. Looks like BlackRock's in the lead. Now here's a look at some of the other top stories we're tracking for you right here in the BNN Bloomberg Newsroom. So here's what we got for that inflation print for the month of December. Consumer prices increased 3.4%. That's the most in three months. The core and the monthly measures also rose by more than forecast. The pickup in prices is a challenge to market expectations that the Federal Reserve, Reserve will start soon lowering interest rates. Shares of Aritzia are the best performing stock on the TSX right now after the retailer reported an unexpected increase in sales for the third quarter. Sales rose nearly 5% from last year. Analysts were expecting a decline. Adjusted profit also topped estimates. Aritzia continues to expand in the U.S. with plans to open as many as 13 new stores this year. Thomson Reuters has offered to buy Swedish e-invoicing and tax solution company Pagero for almost, or for about, I should say, $627 million U.S. Now, the bid tops an earlier bid from a U.S. firm called Vertex. Pagero's board is now recommending shareholders accept the Thomson offer. So there's that weakness in the TSX. Um, as I mentioned, it's pretty broad based. The worst performing sector is healthcare. Tilray is uh, the big lagger there. I mean, since its quarterly results, it's lost nearly 20% in value. We spoke with the CEO yesterday. If you missed that interview, it's on our website about his push into beverages. And it seems like something Erwin Simon is definitely committed to, but boy, has it been a big rollover in that stock. A touch of a rollover south of the border. 2024 has not been kind to long only investors. We're red for the year. I know it's only January 11th, but there's a lot of people that put a lot of stake in that so-called January effect. Um, and those that do are getting increasingly nervous about what January returns will mean for the rest of the year. January is shaping up to be disappointing for equity investors, but positioning in the equity market was also at extremes. In fact, according to our next guest, positioning in the U.S. markets, the most extreme since 2014. Sometimes when we see that kind of consensus trade, there's concerns that, well, the opposite is going to be true. Let's bring in Martin Pelletier, Senior Portfolio Manager for TriVest Wealth at Wellington Altus Private Council. Martin, thanks so much for being with us. Certainly, January is not uh, proving to be kind to the bulls. Positioning is obviously something that you're looking at. Walk us through your thinking. So we take a goals-based approach to investing. So that means we don't have to track benchmarks. And so that allows us to, um, to take a different contrarian approach. And whereas we don't face career risk for not fully tracking a, a tech-heavy S&P, for example. So when we're looking at, at positioning, uh, we can take a look at where fund managers are and where speculators are. And right now, um, I put a chart out, for example, on speculators' positions um, on, on the NASDAQ. 
and it's never ever been this been this high and i got 125,000 hits on it so uh, that was really interesting and then as you mentioned uh, looking at uh, fund managers themselves, uh, their uh, long position in U.S. equity futures themselves is the highest since 2014. So there's a very concentrated position within uh, within these segments of the market, and uh, and they're trading at high. So you know th we did see a sell off at the beginning of the year and then come back again here. And so there's there are probabilities, there are situations that can happen that uh, that that could uh, result in a correction or a sell-off in, in this segment of the market, whereas it's uh, very bullish and, and priced maybe uh, to perfection here. And so, um, you know, it's helpful to be cognizant of uh, some of the risks. So, so that highlights some, maybe the risk in what was the leader last year, right, the, those tech stocks. And certainly towards the end of the year, you saw a broadening out you know, you mentioned kind of the equal weight performance, the S&P 500 equal weight started to outperform. That hasn't held up so much in 2024. And, you know, caveat was just been a couple of days. Uh, but but do you see that broadening out? Is that where you're looking for the opportunities outside of that tech heavy index? Um, yeah. And, and so there's a couple of areas. So uh, one is looking at equal weight or the Russell 2000, for example. Um, there's a huge disconnect between uh, the, uh, the the megas, for example, and uh, which are, are dominating the market and, and the tech uh, heavy side of things versus uh, the rest of the market. And if you do believe in a soft economic landing um, and you believe in the resiliency of the U.S. economy, and if that is your thesis, then you should own uh, the other segments of the market. If you are worried about uh, the U.S. economy, then maybe you should be underweight the U.S. economy, uh, even on, 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 on those who are the, the market leaders right now. And so uh, we're in the camp that the U.S. economy is quite strong. We're in the camp that inflation has, um, has hit a baseline and bottomed last June. You can see that in today's inflation numbers. And uh, there's, you know, some concerns about uh, look at the speculative nature of the market. Uh, we're seeing the, the news on, on the Bitcoin uh, approval and ETFs and, and that sort of thing. So we're just kind of staying away from that side of the market and going down towards the good old fashioned fundamentals and owning uh, the broader segment of the U.S. Uh, economy. You mentioned the Russell. Is that an area that um, w would be poised to benefit? Uh, potentially. So when we're looking at, at, at trades, we want to minimize the downside. And so uh, we did a structured note on, uh, on, on the Russell 2000 that will allow us to, to participate with a coupon as much as 10.5%, 11%, um, with 20, 20 to 30% downside protection. So in case we're wrong, we've got that downside protection in place. Uh, we're also looking at long-dated treasuries, which have not participated. It was a huge disconnect uh, last year. If you believe in, in rate cuts, um, then you would want to own the long end of the, of the bond market. And we're not seeing that. Uh, we're seeing since uh, in 2020, beginning of 2023, you know, Bitcoin and the Nasdaq are uh, up, you know, two, three hundred percent. Whereas, if you look at uh, at the TLT or Treasuries, uh, it's it's fairly flat. And so, uh, we want to participate in in that disconnect. And so, we did a note on on Treasuries that will track it. Uh, 1.2 times with 20% uh, downside. And so, you know, taking that risk managed approach um, is, is probably prudent because there are things that can happen. Geopolitical, uh, there's a Taiwan election coming up this weekend. And uh, if that goes bad, um, you know, China's been stockpiling mm -hmm. uh, energy and, and oil, for example, um, at record levels here, a year's worth in the front end. And, and so maybe there's some risk there that could impact the semiconductor uh, side of things. Oh, you mentioned energy. Um, how are you thinking about those producers going into 2024? Um, the producer side is, is, is interesting. Um, we're, uh, we're long. Uh, our biggest weighting is in Suncor and, and CNQ, um, and, and that's done well for us. And, uh, and, and we're dipping our toes into the mid-cap space, increasing our, our positioning there. Overall, on the, on the energy side, we are underweight compared to the TSX and well overweight compared to the S&P 500. So again, we're taking that risk manager approach to owning, owning the sector. There's lots of things that could go wrong in the geopolitical. I, I wrote a piece in my post uh, this week highlighting all of the geopolitical events and uh, 
Um, you know, all it takes is one super tanker to, to get hijacked, uh, um, a VLCC carrier or, or whatever that could, could, or an escalation with Iran that could, uh, could cause oil prices to go significantly higher. It would not be good for interest rates, not be good for inflation, but uh, it's also helpful to have a little bit of protection in your portfolio.